This is the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. In this episode, we're going to talk about energy efficient Ethernet configuration, uh, which is part of the 802.3 AZ standard. So, um, the point of energy efficient Ethernet is that when um, copper ports are in idle mode, whether they be, you know, um, 10100 or gigabit ports, um, we can lower the power and have them utilize one tenth of the original power approximately um, until there is something to send or it receives a packet in which case it can wake up and even though that does introduce some latency the latency is around seven or seven and a, and a half microseconds in order to wake up so it's it's hardly noticeable so uh, you can configure um, energy efficient Ethernet either globally or on a per port basis. So in this particular case, I'm going to turn it on globally on my uh, 7250 here. And this it's supported on the 7250 and the 7450 devices uh, on the 1 gig copper ports. And the 7450 also uh, supports it on the 10 gig copper ports if you have that module installed. Um, so the point is that it's going to be much more efficient. However, in order to be used, it has to be supported at both ends of the link. So um, I happen to be running on a Dell laptop here, which has a uh, Intel uh, 82579LM gigabit adapter. So under the advanced driver options here, I have energy efficient Ethernet and I have it on. So my options are off or on if the system's awake. So we're going to say on and OK that. And um, so going back into my console, if I do a show um, show EEE statistics or stat, um, I can see my port 111 is actually connected to this laptop. Um, and there's TX event count, TX duration, RX event count, RX duration. So and port uh, 1 slash 1 slash 2 is connected to another 7250 that's also running um, uh, energy efficient Ethernet. So it has to be enabled at both ends of the link in order for it to be effective. And uh, so what we can see here is is um, the TX event count is transmit event count. So it's the number of times um, that the the low power idle mode has been enforced on this port and on the transmit side. Um, so, so that would be the event count here. Then we have the transmit duration. And so that is um, the low power idle event duration counter. Uh, so the, the, um, the how long that it was that it was in idle state or power saving state for. Uh, and then we have the same things on the receive side. So the number of times that it, that it went into low power and then how long it was in. So if I run that command again, those numbers are going to have changed, etc. So, um, for any time that the the uh, interface is idling, it's going to be saving power. So, how much power is that saving? Well, we can show a theoretical with the show power dash savings dash statistics. Um, and so this is well. Uh, so, so it says this is a theoretical calibrated calculation with a plus or minus 5% deviation. Um, so this is the stats for the last five minutes. So we can see, well, I only have unit one, but if, if this was a stack, I would see multiple others. Power consumed, power conserved, and power efficiency. And then down here on a, on a per port basis, so I have enabled on 111 and 112. Um, so it's enabled in those. We can see the power rating in milliwatts, uh, the power consumed in milliwatts, uh, the power conserved in milliwatts, and then the power efficiency in percentage. Um, so it doesn't save a whole lot of power, but it does save some, and it's relatively easy to set up. So if the device at both ends support it, there's really no reason not to. So that's it. Thanks for joining.